And for more on these, I'm joined by Ginger Z. Ginger, it seems like there's no end in sight when it comes to these wildfires. What's the latest on the forecast? And, and do you see an end to this? Yeah, I don't, unfortunately, Diane. I think the pattern has set up, and in a lot of these places, we are in extreme drought, which I'll explain in a bit. But first, let's start with the immediate forecast, because that's the immediate threat. We do have red flag warnings all the way up there from Oregon down to San Diego and Riverside counties. And that's because right at this moment, we have the pattern set up for winds offshore in Southern California. That always creates problems, because you can heat it up and dry it out even more so. We already saw close to records yesterday go to 100 for Burbank, Los Angeles 91. Heat alone just makes it hard for firefighters. It's the wind when you have a 40 mile per hour gust expected that can really fuel and make those fires more erratic and take the relative humidity down, Diane, between 8 and 12 percent. So this is really the problem. You've got that jet stream. It's way up in Canada. So when we have a ridge like this, you have high pressure systems under it. High pressure systems rotate clockwise. We're showing you the flow that's up in kind of the middle of the atmosphere. What that does is settles the air. It does not allow it to lift or sweep out. And so you're going to end up with heating. And so the heating will stick around Burbank 104 Wednesday, 102 Thursday, and it just gets drier and drier. Diane. And Ginger, we know this has been a record breaking fire season in California. Can you explain a little bit about why this season has been so bad? Yeah, this map will really help out, Diane. So just let's start with what's happened. So the LNU complex fire, that's now the fourth largest in California state history. Remember, they had all of the lightning strikes that started that one, uh, the, the complex of the August one, which is the largest in California state history. You've got other areas that have burned in the last couple of years. But now this glass fire is burning in one of the only places that has not burned yet. So you have all of this tinder. And you heard Kana say it's been a century for some of these places. So you have a lot of that foliage and it is extremely dry. And so you add all of these conditions together and the fire burns where it can burn. We also are in extreme drought in much of Oregon, up into parts of the Cascade and just east of them down into Northern California. So it is dry and drought, as we say, begets drought. So this type of pattern going into a winter with La Nina does not bode well for Southern California. It looks like it would be on the drier end. The only thing that could be helped out by this shift in pattern would be the Pacific Northwest potentially getting a little wetter. But we always say that, and I think it's really important to note, you don't forecast any moisture for an area that has been this dry. And on top of all of this, you've got bark beetle and some of the land management issues uh, that we're worried about in California, Washington, and Oregon. So watching all of that, and unfortunately, does not look great going into the rest of this fire season, Diane. All right, you may not be able to forecast moisture, Ginger, but we will cross our fingers for it. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.